Oklahoma State Cowboys a packed house at T.E. Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater for this important big 12th South Conference game. And this is Oklahoma State has not beaten a Mac Brown coach Texas team. And this game presented to us, of course, by Best Buy. And look at the weather. Absolutely perfect day in Oklahoma. You can't possibly beat this. And we'll see now. Both teams could be scoring a lot of points. And you'll see it coming up momentarily. Take a look at a sea of orange here in Stillwater at T. Boone Pickens Stadium. Along with Jesse Palmer, I'm Dave Lamont. Vince Welch is also with us. And you see the weather. The state is excited about this football doubleheader. And why not be excited if you're a Cowboys fan about Oklahoma State and what they have done so far this season on offense. But on defense, Jesse, not quite so impressive. No, no, not at all so far. They've really struggled, especially against the pass. It's going to be critical in this football game that they're able to make plays early against the run and force Texas into passing situations and just get pressure on the quarterback. That's got to be the concern. Keep an eye on it. We've got excellent return people here. Right there, Paris Cox, number 16, has already brought one back this season. Has two kickoff return touchdowns in his career. Tommy Devereaux is the other return man, number 10. It's your choice of orange. You like it burnt or do you like it bright? And this will be Cox. As a whole. And finally, game tackle by most of the Texas special teams. We join our man on the field right now, Vince Welch. Thank you, Dave. You know, one of the key matchups today, as Jesse mentioned, Colt McCoy against that Oklahoma State pass defense. The Oklahoma State pass defense is ranked 116th in the country. McCoy said on tape it doesn't look ba that bad, but the Cowboys have a tendency to bite on the double move, and they'll look to exploit that vulnerability here today. All right, Vince, right now the quarterback is Zach Robinson who took over early in the season when Bobby Reed went down with an injury and has not lost a job. Good run in. So is this guy. Savage looked like he was down back at the 35. Instead, though, he gets uh, some extra yards close to the 40-yard line. Let's meet the Oklahoma State offense. And, well, we went to the guy who's got his name on the stadium, Boone Pickens, presented by Best Buy. Leading the way for us today will be Dantrell Savage running back and uh, wide receiver downfield will be Adarius Bowman, great hands, great receiver. Protection up front will be Dave Koenig, uh, a tackle from Florida. And you see Bowman right there, not an easy guy to tackle, Jesse. He's not at all. He's such a physical presence on the football field, and he's a mismatch for anybody in the secondary for Texas. With his size and stature at 6'4", 220 pounds, he's just a monster over the middle of the field. We have to expect to see that more today. Also, watch for him on running plays because he loves to block. And this play will not count. Let's meet our referee, Cleet Bakeman, or Blakeman, pardon me. Offside on the defense, number 96. Five yard penalty, still first down. That's Derek Lowkey. He of the 4.0 GPA, but not that particular moment, his best. First down and five for the home team. Last win over Texas for OSU, 1997. Robinson, 4.6 speed. And he gets a first down for the Cowboys. Brandon Foster ran him out. An underrated part of his game, Jesse. I'll tell you what, when you look at Zach Robinson on tape, He's got great straight line speed. The coaches told us he runs under a 4-6-40 every single time. He's not necessarily the shiftiest quarterback you'll find, but in a straight line, this guy is legitimately fast. You see what he's done, a couple of 100-yard uh, rushing games for him already this season. Good hit in the open field for Texas that time, and there is Foster again. Well, William Cole makes an appearance out of the game and doesn't get very much. No, Oklahoma State right now just trying to get the ball in the hands of its playmakers, but Brandon Foster doing a great job playing physical at the line of scrimmage and making a play. If he hadn't made that tackle in the open field, though, it could have been a problem. Old-fashioned action football. You see the quick burst. 
And this is a Texas defense, by the way, ranked number 14th in the NCAA against the Rush. And let's meet one of their stars introducing the lineup. Hello, everyone. I'm Frank Ocam, senior defensive tackle for the Texas Longhorns. In the middle, we have the anchor, the strongest person on our team, Derek Loki. Back at linebackers, we have Scott Derry, the weak side linebacker. And in the second there, we have our big play cornerback, Brandon Foster. He's already had to make a couple of tackles already. Riding his head is getting some great blocks. And a first down. Scott Derry tripped him up. Killebrew made sure he wouldn't go any farther, but that was another Cowboy first down. I think what's so impressive about a guy like Dontrell Savage is that he has the ability to make guys miss. You don't have to necessarily get a hat on everybody in order for this guy to have successful run plays. You see it right there. Not only making bigger guys miss, but he can make guys in the secondary miss with his quicks. 29 yards already in three carries. And some more. And the flag is down on this one. Solid tackle for Texas by Bobino. Offsides on the defense, number 98. Half the distance, still first down. Well, Jesse, let's talk for a second about the City X Factor. Yeah, really, I think when it starts for Texas, this is an unbelievable number. They win 91% of their games under Mac Brown when they score first. For Oklahoma State, turnovers is the key. This season, when they've won the turnover battle, they are 4-0. Well, they're about to have Oklahoma State score first, and they do. That is the fifth rushing touchdown for Savage. We talked to Dwayne Atkins, the defensive coordinator for the Texas earlier this week, and he said the thing that scares the most about Oklahoma State's offense running the football is their ability to run option, cue read with the quarterback, and just power football. We saw all of that on that very impressive first drive from Oklahoma State. Rick's on for the PAT, 33 out of 34. And one more on the board for the Cowboys, so a perfect start for Oklahoma State on offense. And you take a look at Dentrell Savage, one of the top backs in the country, leading the conference and leading Oklahoma State to the lead here early. Oklahoma State may be having a breakthrough year in football, and they have a big opportunity here, already ahead 7-0 over Texas. But look at Quan Cosby and what he has done for UT in kickoff returns. Yeah, very dangerous. When you're Texas, you have skilled players all over the field. There should never be a reason why they can't have a guy able to take kickoffs back for touchdowns. His longest is 45 on the year. First look at Colt McCoy and his offense. Number 18th rated in the NCAA. They can do it in the air. And on the ground, this will be a touchdown for Oklahoma State. Jacob Lacey. What a start for the 116th ranked pass defense if you're Oklahoma State. The very first play, an interception return for a touchdown by Jacob Lacey. You're going to see Colt McCoy just pull it away. And this is just an overthrow trying to go to Nate Jones. Jacob Lacey there for the easy interception and a walk in the park touchdown to put his team up 13-0 here early in the first quarter. You see what Oklahoma State has done the last couple of games and how improved they are in that category. And that's how you win football games. And did you not mention in the City X Factor win the turnover battle for OSU and they'll it, win the game? It's going to be huge for this Cowboy football team. Well, in the turnover battle, they're up 1-0. On the board, they're up 14-0. A shocking start in Stillwater. Can the Longhorns recover? We'll find out when we return to Stillwater. Now, the funny thing is, what do you think is more historic in this picture, that bell? No, it's the parking meter. 
1935 in Oklahoma City. That is the first parking meter ever. And now it's in a random home in Stillwater purchased by the gentleman or maybe the lady who lives there as a, a souvenir. Maybe not something I would consider a national landmark, the parking meter, but... Because of that invention, I've paid many tickets. Well, where you lived, a lot yeah. of money. <laughs> well, we talked at the top about Colt McCoy, and he's picked up his 14th interception. This one, a serious one, leading to a touchdown. Absolutely. He's now doubled his interception total from last season. A magical year as a freshman. It's been much tougher sledding so far this year. So we may see Quan Cosby run back another kick more quickly than he would have liked. And that time, Oklahoma State pinching in from both sides. Get Crosby at the Crosby at the 20-yard uh, line. We go down for more on Cole McCoy to Vince Welch. You know, just because McCoy has an early interception, don't expect that to uh, dampen his confidence. He told me yesterday that he really feels like this is his team now. He's more relaxed. He tried to do too much early in the season, and he would uh, dwell on a mistake early on in the year. He feels as though he has gotten beyond that now. He can shake off the mistakes better. We'll see if he's able to do that here in the first quarter. All right, thank you, Vince. So after the Cosby return of 22 yards, this time they'll go on the ground. Not a bad idea either. Although the Oklahoma State defense is there to tackle Jamal Charles, let's meet the Texas offense, and it is brought to you by Best Buy. I'm Colt McCoy, sophomore quarterback for the University of Texas. Carrying the load for us in the backfield is Jamal Charles, coming off a great week last week in the fourth quarter against Nebraska. And anchoring us up front on the offensive line, we got Tony Hills, Outland Trophy candidate from Houston, Texas. And an excellent lineman is Tony Hills making his 23rd straight start at that tackle spot. And that pass nearly intercepted a little bit high and McCoy a little bit shaky to start this game. Let's meet the Oklahoma State defense and bring back our special Stillwater correspondent. Uh, leading our defense today will be Tonga T from Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, linebacker uh, Patrick Levine with 56 tackles this year and a strong safety will be Andre Sexton from Houston. So third and long already for the Longhorns. The very first play they try was a disaster. A 38 yard interception return by Jacob Lacey. Chance here right at the marker, and that will be a first down. That's Jordan Shipley, the junior from Burnett, Texas. This was just a moment ago at the end of the first quarter. That's Mac Brown, the Texas coach. Keep in mind, last week they got down to Nebraska 17-3, so they've done this now really two weeks in a row. This is not the way Mac Brown wants his team to start football games. Well, time of possession. Texas only had the ball barely over four and a half minutes. Oklahoma State 10 27. Now looks he's all look jovial and happy there. <laughs> Man of two faces. Well, you know. It's a new quarter, though. It's a new quarter. That's right. First quarter is behind him, and but it can't be happier as you see what little they've done on the offensive end. Against a defense some thought might be the weak link for Oklahoma State, but not in that first quarter with two interceptions. Des Bryant. This is twice now early you've seen Des Bryant and how strong his hands are. This is just a double post by Oklahoma State. The ball is thrown behind him, but you see his physical ability, the flexibility to reach back and pluck the ball with both hands. He is very impressive for a young player, isn't he? On a way go on the stop. You know, they told us sometimes uh, Des Bryant doesn't always know where to line up, <laughs> but he's only a freshman and he'll learn. It's okay if you're making catches like that. A little bit out too far, and that's an incomplete pass. Trying to get it to a Darius Bowman, a former North Carolina Tar Heel. Averages over 18 yards per catch. Senior from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and a definite NFL prospect. You know, talk about NFL prospects. You look at Texas. They lost nine players last year to the NFL, and I don't think they got hurt more than on defense. They lost both starting defensive ends and three-quarters of their secondary to the league. 
I think that kind of stuff shows up as the season moves on. You know, back to back Thorpe Award winners in 05, Michael Huff. Last year, Aaron Ross. So that's a lot of talent. Michael Griffin was drafted also by the Tennessee Titans. In open space. And there's Bowman. Hard to bring down inside the 10. into the corner. Touchdown, OSU! In the run game right now, Jesse, it doesn't matter what they're dialing up, it is working. Everything seems to be working. You're exactly right, and it also doesn't matter who's carrying the football, if it's Savage, if it's Hunter, or Zach Robinson. Again, Zach Robinson showing you his speed to be able to get to the outside and make a play for a score. Fourth rushing touchdown for Robinson. An 88-yard drive in 11 plays in just over three minutes. 21 to nothing. Oklahoma State over the 15th-ranked Longhorns. And Zach Robinson, the sophomore from Littleton, Colorado, has blown this game open for the moment. See how the Longhorns respond when we return. Mac Brown's team challenged, to say the least, here in Stillwater. Outgained 176 to 46 in total yards, and the most important stat of all, the score. The Cowboys over the Longhorns, 21 to nothing. Zach Robinson running in the touchdown. And for Mike Gundy, everything is going his way, probably better than even in his wildest dreams. Right. No, they, they've gotten quick starts against this Texan te uh, Texas team in the past. But I don't think anybody expected it to, be, to go this well so far today. Short kick. Trying to get it away from Cosby, who is so dangerous, and they do. And okay field position for Texas at the 33-yard line. Well, Jesse, we expected some offense in this game, but we expected it from both teams. And it's the Cowboys' defense, which was knocked before this game, that has really done a great job. They have done an excellent job creating turnovers. They've gotten too early in this football game, but it's been their ability to run the football offensively. 93 yards they were able to get in that first quarter. And it didn't matter who was carrying the ball or what they were dialing up. Everything is working fantastically right now in offense. I think the big question is, what do you do if you're Texas, you can't just junk your game plan. There's 14 minutes and 18 seconds left in the first half. That might be a good game plan right there. It worked against Nebraska and Jamal Charles with his best game of the day. Well, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, Jesse, and there are stories in these numbers. Yeah, no question. It starts right there. You look at the rushing numbers. Really, that number should be 93 for OSU. And the passing numbers are even, but again, I think you look at turnovers, 2-0 to zero right now in favor of Oklahoma State. That's really the biggest reason why Oklahoma State has taken such a commanding lead early. Fifteen yard gain from Charles. Best gain for Texas on the ground. And a big hole and another first down for the Longhorns. Vondrell McGee. Well, Vince Welch, you're on the Oklahoma State sideline. What's it like down there? Well, it's very animated, but Coach Mike Gundy has gone through each of his uh, units telling them just because we're ahead 21 to nothing, this game is a long way from over. Remember, Texas has come back and beaten Oklahoma State the last two times, including after the uh, Cowboys had a big lead here the last time they played in Stillwater. He reminded the teams of that and said, we got a lot of football left. Keep pressing. We'll see yeah. if they do it. All right, Vince, thank you. Saw the numbers while Vince was telling you the story the Cowboys sideline this time the OSU defense all over McGee and you're right that Nathan Peterson on the stop Donovan Woods also around there number eight the one-time quarterback uh, Texas has the capability just remember what they did just a week ago with one person basically and it all happened in the fourth quarter I like what we're seeing on this drive so far from Texas not trying to get too fancy run the football stick with your game plan coming into this football game yes it's 21 nothing we are still early in this game though in the second quarter Second down and 11 for McCoy. We've not seen either team. Well, Texas, I guess, that one deep post pattern. And there's a huge mistake. Flags are down. Fumbled snap. McCoy is going to say, wait a minute, there's no play here, Mr. Official. And he may be right. Remember, backup center in for Ball Texas right now. On the offense, number 25. It's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. That's on Jamal Charles. 
McCoy looks like he was just trying to change the play. Well, you're lucky, but then again, we talked about some of the difficulty a quarterback can have with his backup center. Sometimes they're not accustomed so much to the snap count as well, obviously, as the starter is. They're going to have to have a little powwow on the sidelines after this series. Just make sure everyone's on the same page because Texas cannot afford mistakes like that right now down 21 points. Chris Hall has taken over the injured Dallas Griffin. You may have heard Vince say earlier that it doesn't appear that Griffin's going to be able to return. Obayana now into the tailback spot. Well, that's an inventive little play and a good block. And what could have been a disastrous sack, Colt McCoy just made that one up as he went along. Very Brett Favre-esque, really, <laughs> just trying to create on the run. He's going to get flushed out from the right side of your screen, just start drifting to the left. They're trying to set up a screen to the back, Obanaya. They're able to get that done, no matter how it looks. Just get him the football, let this thing get north-south. There's Marque Fountain, been playing with a bit of a hamstring injury, providing the pressure from that edge. Oklahoma State trying to run a player off, and they had 12 on there. They managed to get one more body off to get the correct number. On either side, Jesse, you could see the hole, and that play went right into where there wasn't a hole. Well, it's time for the AFLAC trivia question. And our question this week is, Oklahoma State is currently tied for the lead in the Big 12 South. When was the last time the Cowboys were a conference champion? Think about that for a little while. Ponder that one. Yeah. Big 12 championship. I guess the Big 12, though, has only been in existence. Well, I said a conference championship. Conference championship. Remember that. Conference championship. Uh -huh. That could be the key. Now, Texas on fourth down, and you see how far they have to go. That's a full yard and then some. And they're going to go for it. And with Derek Loki in the game as a fullback, they take a timeout. Timeout, Texas. Look, they are going to go for it on fourth down, a little more than a yard. Of course, they'll try to put that head on. I think he toppled over. <laughs> It'll be a giant bobblehead, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see McGee in there, number two. Obayana, number three, is in there at the back position. And number 96 is not a back at all, but a defensive Lyman Derek Loki in, in a jumbo package. I think he got it. Thought for a second the knee had hit behind the first down marker, but an excellent effort by McGee to keep the drive alive for the Longhorns. I like the call by Mac Brown in Texas inside the 30 yard line, trying to create momentum, doing whatever it takes to get a score and get back in this football game. I think he thought it was a first down. We thought it was a first down. Mike Gundy doesn't want it to be a first down. <laughs> a career cowboy, Mike Gundy, played here, was unbelievably successful here as a quarterback, and you see it is indeed a first down. So right now, the Texas Longhorns really needed to hit that fourth down and one. As you see the score, 21-0 Oklahoma State. We are in Stillwater, 15th-ranked Texas in a hole in the second quarter at Boone Pickin Stadium. With Jesse Palmer, I'm Dave Lamont. Vince Welch enjoying a beautiful day outside on the sidelines. Jamal Charles back in the game, the tailback spot for the Longhorns. He had the 290 yards last week versus the Cornhuskers. Solid tackle that time by Roderick Johnson to prevent Charles from busting a big play and looked like he was going to at first. Now, earlier we asked you, that's right, the Aflac trivia question, Mr. Duck. Oklahoma State is currently tied for the lead of the Big 12 South. When was the last time the Cowboys were a conference champion? Got to go back a long time. Wow, before I was born. You no, know, you didn't have to say that, <laughs> huh, did you? <laughs> I knew that was... <laughs> I, uh, I, I was around for a little while. Charles, big hole. Pops one, pops two. Touchdown. That looked like a play from last week against Nebraska. The explosive nature of Jamal Charles and his speed and his vision to see the field, but just the power. He runs differently this year. And that was a great example. Slicing through the Oklahoma State Cowboy defense. He's going to take the give. 
right up the gut, break a tackle, strong legs, and you see just separation, and it only takes 10 yards, Dave. <laughs> You're right. It doesn't take the guy very, very much space to break out. Now Texas on the board, Charles, that's what he did last week against Nebraska, and the whole country talking about that. A nine play, 68 yard drive in just over three minutes. First time today that this stadium has been quiet because everything else has been going Oklahoma State's way. And a lot of time in this first half. First quarter moved by fairly quickly. The second quarter has been much slower. Charles is the tailback. First deep shot of the game. And just kind of ran out of room that time. Good coverage by Lacey, who has two interceptions, trying to hit Nate Jones. Oklahoma State's secondary continues to play outstanding in this game. Jacob Lacey with a big play on that last one. Texas is down to one timeout in this half. Timeout. We'll find out what Colt McCoy didn't like and what Texas is going to do about it when we return. Mac Brown, it's all right. I'll take that time out. No problem. So after the timeout by Texas, they just said, you know what? Why don't we give it to uh, Jamal Charles? Good little pocket for McCoy. First down for the Texas Longhorns into Oklahoma State territory. And that is Nate Jones, senior from Texarkana, leading receiver on this team. And Nate Jones has really stepped up for the, the Texas Longhorns this season. They've lost Lima Sweet. He was really their big home run hitter at wide receiver. Had a lot of speed and a lot of snaps in big games. So they've needed some of the other players to step up. Nate Jones has been one of those guys. And there's no question now what you talked about at the beginning of the drive that you can sense it happening. Momentum clearly now with the team in white. Just to see if you say that McCoy could be sacked. What an effort here. He is not known for this. Unbelievable run. <laughs> he was, should have been sacked twice. Well, you can see why the coaching staff wants Colt McCoy to run with the football more often. Look at the athleticism on this play. Not only his ability to get out of the pocket, avoid the rush, his eyes are downfield. He feels the pressure, steps up, keeps his balance with his left hand, and then just outruns everybody to the sidelines, and bam, right there, you couldn't really see it. He got a great block from Jamal Charles to help spring him. Now with an empty little eight-button spin move. Wow, that was right out of the video game. He's not normal because he's, I mean, he's a good runner, but he's not a credible runner that's going to run all day long, and he can't hang on to the snap this time. Perhaps winded from that effort. I don't know, but that's a loss of three. Vince, uh, do you expect to see Colt McCoy become into a, a ballet figure out there? <laughs> well, you say he's not known for his running. He said that uh, last week was the first time he'd ever had a running play actually called for him, <laughs> and he says his linemen are always is giving him grief because they tell him when he gets out of the pocket he needs to get down to a knee he said you know what I like to run when I get out there I want to get everything I can get and he certainly did it on that last play well he'll probably quiet the room in the uh, tape session when that run comes on so everybody can watch it hey coach can we run that one back again can we run that one back again absolutely <laughs> better hurry up and get the snap off Fake to Obayana, down the middle, open, touchdown, Texas! Jermichael Finley, and we have a game. All of a sudden, we have a game. Jermichael Finley on the post into the red zone. He, he scored in a similar play against Oklahoma early this season. It's just a three-by-one formation. This is just a faster player against linebackers and Jermichael Finley. Three-by-one, three receivers eligible to one side of the field, only one into the boundary. That sets up nicely for Texas, and they're able to take advantage of it. The matchup of Jermichael Finley. 16th touchdown pass for Colt McCoy. Second one for Finley on this season. Six plays, 63 yards, and only 2 11. And it was 21 0 Oklahoma State. Now the Longhorns have rallied. And Savage is dragged down after a short game by Arakpo. Yeah, the Browns may end up being a big story if they can maintain that momentum. They've not yet seen Oklahoma State throw the ball deep. 
They have not sent Bowman or any of the other receivers, Broadway or Bryant, deep. And most of their throws have been intermediate or short. And you see the difference also in the, how the Texas defense has played much better. Texas blitzing from the edge and may have been off sides on that blitz, actually. Or could have forced a false start. Robert Killebrew was putting the pressure on. False start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. That's the big left tackle, Russell Ocon. Yeah, we saw Texas right there bring a little bit of pressure all of a sudden now into this second quarter. They're not content with just sitting back and letting Zach Robinson pick them apart running or throwing the football. I think they're going to start cranking up the heat a little bit, as they say, start getting in the backfield, start forcing the hand for Zach Robinson, Oklahoma State. Second down and 11 after that penalty. Again, more blitzing, and that should be an incomplete pass. Covered very nicely that time on the Longhorns, and uh, Bobino right there, Rashad Bobino. His 36th straight start when he stepped on the field. Yeah, you know, th this defense has lost a lot of players in the NFL. We talked about it earlier. You lose your two starting defensive ends, three of your four defensive backs, but this linebacker crew has been what's kept this Texas defense sound. All three of them are returning starters, and you just mentioned it. Bobino has started every game he's played in since being at Texas. You saw a shot of Dwayne Aquino, the co-defensive coordinator for this team, Hawaiian-born. Third and 11, everybody in on this one. Of course, they set him up for the screen. This will be a first down for Oklahoma State with Tostin. And stepped out of bounds, but it's a big play for Oklahoma State. We talked about third down conversions. It's important for Oklahoma State. They've been so much better in late games. Here they're just setting up a simple back screen to Keith Totson. Lots of speed, lots of depth also at running back so far for this Oklahoma State team also. And you see him right here just, oh, just barely step out of bounds. That one was close to going all the way to the house. Sophomore, another Texan on this team. 6'1", 210 pounds, quite a little bit early in the year. First one is Savage and Hunter. It's got to be hard if you're the number three back on this team to get any playing time. Going to be second down and about six coming up. Savage and was the tailback. Bowman made the catch. Senior from Chattanooga, Tennessee. 18 career touchdowns came into this game with 110 catches. Six-yard gain. That's 110 for his career. And Tostin stays in the tailback position. He's double teamed and a flag thrown right at the Texas players. It was Loki and Derry teaming up on the stop. There is no foul on the play. Third down. All right. False alarm, Dave. And it'll be third down and four. Now, we haven't seen Robinson run the ball in this quarter yet. Maybe here on third and four? Well, it certainly is in his wheelhouse. There's no question about that. He's a weapon, really, I think, in all downs and distances. I think the critical thing now, it's nice, is this is a very manageable third down for Oklahoma State. It's not third and long. You can go into your playbook, dial up a lot of stuff for this type of situation. A lot of motion. Pettigrew first. Now Bowman to the near side. In the flat. Tostin makes a heck of a catch, and the effort gets a first down. Brandon Foster on the stop. But this is the third string running back for the Cowboys. And that was an outstanding play by Keith Totson. That really didn't have to be as difficult as it was. He's wide open in the flat, and this football is a little errant. And if it's not for an acrobatic circus-type catch, and really the second big play of this series for Keith Totson, Oklahoma State might be looking at a punt right now. A couple of times they've hit on some third downs on this drive. And this arm wrestling match back and forth seems to now have the Cowboys with the advantage. And Tostin popping holes and getting close to the first down. He's got a couple of yards to go. Meantime, the clock being very nicely used, I think, by Oklahoma State. They have all of their timeouts. That's nice vision by Keith Tostin. That's just a basic zone running play, which means the linemen are just running in tracks. There's no particular hole designed for Tostin to hit. He's supposed to use his vision, and if he sees a cutback opportunity to take that chance, he does it there. Very nice piece of running. Gain of eight by Tostin.
Staying on the ground and on the ground quickly. Boy, busting right through there was Loki, and that's a significant loss for the Cowboys. Oh, yeah, Oklahoma State really trying to slow this tempo down right now, but Loki's having a big quarter. He's been in the Time backfield out. a couple times. Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys have two left. Well, Jesse, let's take a look at the best buy playbook during this 30-second timeout. Well, I go back to the first quarter. Texas on offense starting to drive a little bit. It looks like they might make a press. Oklahoma State up in this football game. They get a big third down completion. And Nate Jones popped up. And Jacob Lacey makes a big interception, his second of the day, to keep the momentum on Oklahoma State's side. They were able to capitalize later on that drive and score. Big play so far in this football game. Big reason why also Oklahoma State's still up. And of course, Lacey had the 38-yard interception return for a touchdown on the first play of scrimmage from the Longhorns after Oklahoma State had already scored on the first drive of the game, and they just marched down the field as if it were spring ball. Another big third down opportunity right here for Oklahoma State while there's still 58 seconds left in the half. And it looks like Oklahoma State's called another timeout. timeout. Oklahoma State, their second timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. Well, I tell you what, we, we got to laugh during one of our breaks, Jesse. They're putting scores up on the board here, and they got to the Kansas-Nebraska game. Kansas is going to be here next week in Stillwater. And when they put that score up, what Kansas did to Nebraska today, the place went, ooh. I thought it was a basketball score. I wasn't <laughs> sure if there was a basketball game going on. 76 points. Well, we talk about the BCS top 10 teams. All these schools unbeaten. Kansas puts up a 76 today to go. Look at that. I wasn't around for that, okay? <laughs> no, Dave, you were. All right. 1908, the first time since Kansas has gone 9 0. Outstanding season. Robinson, 16 to 22 for 191. Yeah, Mark Mangino may be working his way into the Coach of the Year award. South Florida is losing again today, by the way. Last I checked was Cincinnati, so the air's out of that balloon. Big play, first down. That'll stop the clock automatically. And Toasting all over the place right now for Oklahoma State. Dontrell Savage getting some rest. Kendall Hunter getting some rest. And Toasting, I've been calling him Toasting, but it is Toasting, is burning Texas. And flags everywhere on this play. Texas says that football is ours, but I think the officials are going to get the last word as they always do. Ball start on the offense, number 65. It's a five-yard penalty, still first down. That's another lucky break from Oklahoma State. How about keep toasting? Just the depth they've had on running back in this football game. We talked coming up into this game about the ability at running back, a two-headed monster, a quarterback that can run. Keep toasting, though, in the pass game as well as the run game. We've seen it in this drive. He's been, he's been unbelievable. First and 15. And Oklahoma State doing a nice job with the clock right now, just really milking it. They don't want to give a possession back to Texas before the half's over. Quick hitter. And short of the first down is Des Bryant. Clock still ticking. And we have an injured Texas player that will stop the clock, and that is Drew Kelson. So a break for Oklahoma State. They didn't have to use their final timeout. Well, how about Des Bryant on that last play, catching a hitch pass. They're dialing that up, hoping he can catch it and get out of bounds. Instead, he's able to make a guy miss and get the football further down the field. Yeah, there really is a lot of talent on this uh, offensive side of the ball for this team. If they can match that with defense, this is going to be a powerhouse. Well, this Des Bryant, Larry Fedora, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, told us earlier in the week that Des Bryant is the most talented freshman he's ever seen at wide receiver in all his years of coaching. It's a big statement. He coached at Florida. He's been around some pretty good players. So second down, not a whole lot for the first down. And that extra timeout. As Kelson pretty much able to walk off under his own power. Now he go to the end zone here, maybe? Maybe. A little high. 
Pettigrew is a big guy at 6'6". That pass just too high for him to jump. He was open. Zach Robinson is going to want to get this ball back when he sees it on tape. He's got Brandon Pettigrew wide open in the corner of the end zone. Nobody around him. They run a fork route or a pick route with a Darius Bowman that leaves him wide open. That ball just got away from Zach Robinson. Only nine seconds left. So they, they do have the timeout, so this is not crazy. Go ahead and run this play. Now they're thinking only field goal. They're going to try one more for six. Under a lot of pressure. Throwback. Not to the goal line. They got to call timeout. The clock will stop. Let's find out what the situation is. The halftime gun goes off. Let's get the official word from our referee before we call it a half. And Texas is trying to run off the field as fast as possible. Now, I believe we like to use the following expression on our family of networks. Not so fast, my friend. <laughs> it was Pettigrew trying to make that. Remember that Tennessee Titans Super Bowl against the Rams? That's what that play looked like a little bit. Let's see what the call is. The half is not over. Buck, please put two seconds on the game clock. Two seconds. Wow. So now time what out. do you do? Oklahoma State. Okay, Oklahoma State. It's a you got the ball out. now. It's a 30. Very close to the goal line yeah. with only one play left. Do you just try to kick the field goal and get the points? Or do you get aggressive and try to open this thing back up a little bit? Well, Mike Gundy takes the last timeout he has. It's excellent clock management, though, oh, just man. to have this option, just to have this choice. Very nice job. So up-tempo all game long so far for Oklahoma State. As we get into this two-minute situation, they really slow it down nicely. It's a 63-yard drive, 12 plays, and only four away. Now the officials are telling the players, you better get on the field here. The timeout is over, guys. They have blown these players with the whistles three times, trying to blow them back onto the field. And they're going to go for it. Kind of like in basketball, when they give you the second whistle, the third whistle, and then they'll hit you with a technical foul if you're not there. You don't obviously do that in football, but now they will go for it out of the eye formation. Johnson, the fullback, gets Savage at the top of the eye and a flag down. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 men in the formation. Half the distance to the goal line. Still first down. All righty. That makes it a little easier for Oklahoma State. Your heart has got to be pounding if you're Oklahoma State or Texas. This is one of those plays that can change the entire course of the game. Wide open touchdown, Oklahoma State pedigree. Play action, you get your big target, Brandon Pettigrew, in the back of the end zone for the score. What a gamble by Mike Gundy. Well, when you have a target that good, that strong, you go to it. I agree. Not very many teams can boast the skill they have at wide receiver, at running back, and at tight end. So the half concludes with a PAT, and our score at halftime is Oklahoma State 28 and Texas 14. Our telecast of Texas and Oklahoma State is presented by Best Buy. Mike Gundy's decision with two seconds to go from the one-yard line to go for it pays off on the short touchdown pass to Pettigrew. And Oklahoma State has doubled up the first half against that man, Mac Brown, who picked up his 100th win at Texas last week. Going to take a lot to get win number 101 as the Longhorns head coach. And Texas over will get the football first to start this half. And this is Cosby. And he is well covered. Now, Boone Pickens, this is Boone Pickens Stadium, of course, and he is a big benefactor of Oklahoma State Athletics, and he has a little proposition for the Texas Longhorns because Oklahoma State has not scored an offensive touchdown against Texas the last couple of games in the second half. So Mr. Pickens has a little wager. 
I'm confident the Cowboys are going to score in the second half this year probably several times. But in the event we don't, the event we don't score and they shut us out, I'll make a $5,000 contribution to University of Texas athletic program. But there you go. So it's on the record. Now, Mr. Pickens and $5,000 are, that's not a whole lot of his fortune. He could go home and find it in his couch right now, probably. <laughs> He's done well for himself, and Texas looks like they're going to get very close to a first down on the opening play for them in the third quarter. Certainly, Jesse, a much better start for Texas than the first play of the first quarter, the Colt McCoy interception that was returned for the touchdown by Jacob Lacey. But what do you see in this first half for Texas that's got to change, or from the first half that's got to change in the second half? Well, I really think this game so far has been a game of momentum. In that first quarter, it was all Oklahoma State capitalizing on a lot of the Texas problems and turnovers they started gaining back some of that momentum in the second quarter but then it was a great job on that last drive by Oklahoma State to capitalize get a touchdown going in they just got to keep doing what they're doing stick with it get some of that momentum back and Colt McCoy gets another first down for Texas Vince you had a chance to talk to both coaches Mike Gundy said they went for the touchdown instead of the field goal there at the end of the first half because he feels he's going to need the points in the long run today. Got to have a lot of points on the board. He says he's going to encourage the team or would encourage the team at halftime to continue to keep hitting hard on defense and keep playing strong, knowing they got to have points on offense. Mac Brown says he was very disappointed in his team's play. Oklahoma State had 54 plays to Texas's 29. He said we got to be better. We're confident that we can and will be. And they certainly are here, Vince with three plays and three first downs. Nate Jones with the catch and Texas quickly moving down the field. And you know, Texas has done this kind of thing before in this particular series against Oklahoma State. They had two huge comebacks in 04 and in 05. Total combined, look at that, 87 point deficit they were able to come back in those two seasons. History dictates that this Texas team plays better against Oklahoma State in the second half. That was a message Mac Brown gave his players coming on the road into this stadium was weather the storm in the first half because we'll have the advantage in the second half. Under Brown on the road, the Longhorns are 37 and 7. McCoy sees everything open up. It doesn't stay open for very long, though. Picked up a couple of yards, though, before Patrick Levine put him down. Now the Pacific Life game summary. Let's take everybody through the first half stats. And again, the big numbers here, I think, stay with the turnover numbers. You see two turnovers early for Texas. One, a fumble by Adarius Bowman in the second half for Oklahoma State. Aside from that, OSU with the advantage in rushing yards. But look at the number on passing yards as well. 219, well above what Texas was able to get. And McCoy. Several pump fakes, now a dangerous throw, and it is brought in, but inbounds or not. Oklahoma State wound up with the football, that's Lacey. Now he's arguing that he gets his third interception, and then the officials say, no, nobody gets anything, and it's third down. Well, again, Cole McCoy just doing a nice job, feeling his way in the pocket. They get a, a bit of a wheel route by Nate Jones. There's Jordan Shipley on the sidelines, out of bounds. Third down and eight coming up. Again, this Oklahoma State defense has done a very good job against the pass. Well, 116th in the nation coming in. You can't say it enough, I think. They just, they've created turnovers. They've made big plays in coverage. And they're gonna look this one over. Again, all plays are reviewed, of course. But this one's going to get some extra attention. We're going to see again. This is a jump ball opportunity. Jordan Shipley goes up, gets two hands on it. But at the same time, Jacob Lacey kind of palmed the ball as yeah. well. And I think it looked like he was hand. able to rip it away. Now, the tie goes to the receiver. Right. In those situations. But is there a tie? Right Cor there there is, yeah. Correct. But Jordan Shipley does get a foot down in bounds. If that is a tie... If you're Texas, you're arguing that's a completion. And if you're Oklahoma State, you're arguing it's an interception. <laughs> you think that's their argument or just incomplete? Well, it doesn't look like to me there that Jake Lacey got a foot down in bounds. Let's see. I think it's going to be his. All right. At that well, point, that, nope. that, that's his left. Yeah, but at the point his left came down, I don't think he had complete I don't control, think he did, did either. I don't think yeah. he did either. It's a bit of a tough angle once again. Second time we have gone to Terry Porter's replay booth in this game. 
You see, Shippey does a good job of high-pointing the football, but Lacey has a palm on it. It's cradled in his left hand. His left foot's down there if he has control. Now he has control, but the right foot's out of bounds. The ruling on the field incomplete. See Colt McCoy on the headset getting some instructions from his offensive coordinator, Greg Davis. But it's been another nice drive, though. Really, I think this Texas offense has looked very smooth and comfortable from the second quarter on. And Colt McCoy's played very composed in that time frame as well, and it showed. If this is ruled incomplete, it'll be the sixth play of the drive coming up on third down and eight. They came in quickly, hit three, first down with three straight plays, and things have slowed a bit. I think it's amazing with Colt McCoy. It's so easy to forget this guy's only a sophomore. You think about the success yeah. he had as a freshman last year. And he had, what he had to walk into. Well, absolutely. Look who he replaced. Vince Young was 30 and two as a starter at Texas. And after all the great numbers in 2005 they put up, that's what Colt had to follow. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The Oklahoma State caught the ball. His left foot came inbounds. And the Oklahoma State ball on the six yard line, first down. Uh, you and I have missed both of the reviews and that is Lacey's third pick. Well, they've determined then that Jacob Lacey right now has possession of the football when the left foot lands right there. He has the ball. One foot is down and inbounds, and that is his third interception today. Fourth on the season, and that nice little drive that you and I were talking about is abruptly ended. You're Oklahoma State right now. You put an exclamation point on the first half with a touchdown, and you come back in the first series again defensively in the second half and get a turnover right away in the passing game. Savage at the top of the eye with Zach Carter in the fullback spot for Oklahoma State at the six. And that's Pettigrew. Tough to bring down. May have not quite made the first down. Deion Beasley flipped him. Very close to the mark, but a little bit short. I like the play call. It's the second time today we've seen this action. It's a naked bootleg to the right. It's a simple pass route. Brandon Pettigrew in the flat. A very easy completion, putting the ball in the hands of your big playmaker and letting him get north and south. They do a lot of moving pocket here, I've noticed. With they, they do, and you know why? Because they can run the football so well. It sets it up and makes it easier to get to. Savage, that's the first down. You see that little stutter step in such small space there, and he was able to pick up some additional yardage. Oklahoma State runs a counter action run type play. It's a little bit of misdirection, and again, you're right, the vision of Dontrell Savage. So we go back and take a look at this. It's just reverse ball handling for the quarterback, and there's Savage. And what's so great about him, too, is that, you know, yeah, he does move east-west, but at the beginning, he's moving very north-south. He's getting the yards he needs necessarily at the beginning of the run, and his just ability to make guys miss, I think, is what's so impressive. Again, that moving pocket, and they'll double it up one more time. Why not? Better group. Too strong for one man. They bring down. He lost the ball, but in a favorable place for the Cowboys. That is just a load of 6'6", 260. And it's not a complicated play. There, there are nine-year-old football teams that run that exact football play. But if it's working and Texas can't stop it, why would you stop calling it? If you're running the football as well as you are right now at Oklahoma State, I'd, I'd keep dialing that up until they can stop me. The ball is put down to the 33-yard line. You see Robinson having an outstanding day, spreading the ball around. Got 13 yards on that play with Pettigrew. And this time Robinson nifty on the fake, but Texas was not fooled. McElroy number 38, McElroy, pardon me, and also Arakpo in there for the Longhorns. It's a nice job by McElroy and Arakpo staying at home, playing assignment football. You have to do that against this Oklahoma State offense with the option game and the Q game. You have to play your assignments, play your gaps. That was nicely demonstrated there by Texas.
all the way. And where you could see from the start of that play that Mumbleroy had that one red for Savage. He walked up Jesse as if he looked like he was going to blitz, and then he didn't, and he just his eyes stayed with Savage the entire time. Yeah, and it's, it's a good idea. Dontrell Savage is a good chance that that's maybe where the football is going on third down. Now look at Zach Robinson's numbers right now, seven for seven on third down, converting five of them into firsts. It's been big for this Oklahoma State defense over the past five weeks. Much better third down conversion ratio. They're not getting penalized as much. The third downs are more manageable. Last week against K-State, they converted three third and longs into touchdowns. Back the other way on the throwback and open his pedigree. He's got a little room here. Finally dragged down in Texas territory. Once again, Muckleroy's made a lot of the stops on this drive, but they just continue to throw to Pettigrew. It's the same play that got Oklahoma State set up at the one-yard line to score at the end of the first half. This is just a rollout by Zach Robinson. And Brandon Pettigrew on the throwback is just going to cut across the grain in the action away from Texas defenders, wide open. He gets the throw completed, and a beautiful drive here so far for Oklahoma State to start the third quarter. Talked about it at the beginning of the show. If you're just joining us, Oklahoma State has led all the way in this game, and they've done it with an extraordinary number of offensive weapons. Pettigrew now seven catches, 74 yards by our count. And here's another one of the weapons right there for Mike Gundy's team. Right here is 28 to 14. Oklahoma State over 14th ranked Texas. 1997 was the last time the Cowboys beat the Longhorns in this series. Savage trying to move that pile to the first down is not able to do it. So here comes the third and short. And we've, one thing we have picked up on is the quick go for Oklahoma State. Absolutely. This is a situation certainly where they can quick huddle, get to the line of scrimmage quickly, fast, try to catch the defense off guard. It looks like they're just going to set up in a no huddle situation. Just get this thing snapped, get it going. Don't allow Texas to change personnel. Let's see who's guilty here. That was interesting because I watched up the field. Des Bryant was on a takeoff pattern toward the end zone. Oh, well, he's a guy Oklahoma that can, yeah, he's a guy that can go get it too. Whoops! Pistol Pete inadvertently <laughs> fired, fired the uh, pistol there. Not supposed to do that there, Pete. Four, four Offsides people. on the defense. <laughs> Number 99. A five-yard penalty, and the yardage is enough for our first downs. <laughs> 40 students now cannot hear. I'll wow. tell you what, what's great. Zach Robinson, that's the third time now he's been able to, to trigger the Texas D-line offsides, doing a great job with the play count and the snap count, taking advantage of playing at home. It really what's slows he, that pass rush down. Sorry, Dave. No, that's what I was going to say. 23 first downs for Oklahoma State. On the end zone this time. Now they go underneath. This may wind up in the end zone. Though. It's Bowman, and he is in. Well, they cleared that out so nicely. It seems like everything Oklahoma State dials up offensively in this football game is working, and it's all because their ability to run the football successfully. It opens up so much else for them in the passing game, whether it's play action, whether it's option, whether it's sprint out throwback. Oh! They got plays, they got guys running wide open. Number 10 total offense in the NCAA, 488 yards per game. And they are racking it up right now. It's an eight play, 94 yard drive and 441 set up by Jacob Lacey's third interception of the ball game. And for the second time today, Oklahoma State has a 21 point lead. One more look at Adarius Bowman. He's really maybe not going to be all first team Big 12, huh? All right. Now, Jack, our crew has already got some plans to pull up and watch that one. And you see the difference in the populations and the stadium capacities. Now, to be fair to the folks here at Boone Pickens Stadium, they are under construction. That 48-5 by next year will be considerably higher when they finish all the work here in Stillwater. Going to get it over 60, as a matter of fact. Third down. And that's not to the marker. Broadway on the catch. Well, Texas defense, Jesse, done a very good job forcing three and outs this season. Almost 36%. Today, there you go. How about that? 
not being able to force three and outs, which is the biggest reason why Oklahoma State has run 71 plays, 72 now in this football game. You know, it's funny, Oklahoma State coming in the last five games have been averaging 560 yards of offense. Today, they could be on pace for 650. And they run a reverse on fourth and three, and it does not work. Dion Beasley got all over Bowman that time, and a gamble, that's one of the few times that Mike Gundy has come up with the snake eyes when he's gambled. Otherwise, everything else has pretty much gone his way. We'll give Texas defense a lot of credit for staying home and sniffing it out. Now, if you're Texas and Colt McCoy, with under 15 minutes left now, you gotta start thinking, we're throwing the football, we're trying to get back in this game. And while Oklahoma State's defense, especially against the pass, has played so up to this point, I think this is where they get really tested. 116th ranked in the nation coming into the game. They have played way better than their statistics. That's not a bad idea. Get it to Charles and the Texas first down. I would think that play is going to be open a lot, that I, option. I would think so, too. Watching that play, I'm amazed. It, it doesn't seem like Colt McCoy has had the opportunity to just sit back in the pocket and find receivers. It seems like he's been forced all game long to flush to his right or to his left. Oklahoma State's defense has done a good job with only four guys. Again, if they can't sack Colt McCoy, they're forcing him to move and getting pressure. Well, I think the deal is Oklahoma State has a moving pocket on purpose. McCoy's has been moving because he's had no choice. Well, there should be a flag there. That certainly looks like intentional grounding. Now, McCoy's going to make a claim. Andre Sexton, the strong safety, had come in, and there's the flag. Yeah, that... Well, he wasn't throwing it to, to an eligible wide receiver. That was thrown yep. back towards his offensive line. Intentional grounding on the offense, number 12. It's a loss of down from the spot of the pass. Be second down. Well, it's been a mistake filled. Wow, Mac Brown is irate but let's see if the officials were right with this one as we initially thought they were oklahoma state going back to the pressure package yeah that's yulatoski in the history of football guys with names like yulatoski play on the line <laughs> you don't find them out wide very often you don't, i don't know why yeah. that is thread Belenikov was one yeah that's... that might be the last it's just sort of one of those things about football mccoy he's got a lot of room to run and he has been very effective when forced out of the pocket on his own. Chris Collins fighting through some injuries, able to make that stop. And again, he's been forced out of the pocket a lot. Yeah. It almost seems like every snap, he's not able to just take his five-step drop and set up. Now, give Cole McCoy a lot of credit. While the timing has been disruptive and things aren't necessarily there for him downfield, he has done a very good job today of tucking the ball and getting north and running. Well, he has taken a bit of a beating today. As you saw, nine times he's been hit. Well, why not take the pressure off? Boy, Charles does not let you get him with that first tackle. An ankle tackle will not work, and he is very close to that marker. Looks like he may have the first down. Quentin Moore finally able to make the stop on Jamal Charles. If you're Oklahoma State and you're sending a lot of pressure trying to confuse coverages and mix stuff up, you risk getting gashed. And that time, that was very close. Jamal Charles almost broke that. You run that risk. You can try to confuse the quarterback, but you leave big lanes wide open. And on that particular play, Jamal Charles was able to convert for the first down. He had that huge fourth quarter against Nebraska a week ago. He gave Texas their seventh win. Underneath, that's Finley. Now, Texas is trying to get seven straight 10-win seasons, which is just staggering. But if they don't get this one, they'll go to 7-3, and that 10-win streak is in big-time danger. Well, I'll tell you what's interesting, too, is, is in the Mac Brown era, they've only had seven road losses in his entire tenure. In 10 years, only seven road losses and six consecutive seasons over 10 wins. That's just what's expected now at Texas. And on the road, Jesse, against unranked teams, and the Cowboys are an unranked team, they are 31-4 and four against unranked teams wow. away from Austin. Wow. Obayana, I don't think it looks like a first down. Chatham on the stop for the Cowboys. So there's a lot of trends that are being busted right now in Stillwater. And it is a first down for it. It's a nice little drive, by the way, for Texas. It is. It's it not is. been easy, and they overcame a major penalty. Just moving it methodically. Good play by Colt McCoy, mixing it up nicely, too.
And Jamal Charles will march into the end zone, and is he about to start a fourth quarter like last week? And he's just too good to keep out of there, and Texas still a long way to go. Well, he's too fast. He has that speed. Texas just not going away. It's a gift to Jamal Charles, and he has the vision to cut it back. And just the speed gets him to the sideline. He's able to just creep in the end zone. You see Colt McCoy in the sidelines now getting his guys fired up, trying to keep him in this football game. To get this extra conversion down two possessions, a lot of time still left in the fourth quarter. Bailey on for the PAT. He aims that right at the basketball arena, and Texas back on the board after a sluggish third quarter on offense. They come out of the fourth quarter, led by Colt McCoy, but now it's up to the other side of the ball for the Longhorns. Can they stop a potent Oklahoma State Cowboy offense? In Stillwater, Oklahoma, there's a little bit of Texas that came into the Sooner State. Speaking of the Sooners on this family of networks, they're taking on Texas A&M uh, south of us in Norman later on tonight. But orange is the color. You like it bright orange or burnt orange? We got it for you today. Well, there you see what Texas has to do. It didn't work out real well the last time they had to dig out of their own one-yard line. They weren't able to get a first down. Well, this punting game by Oklahoma State so far in the second half is forcing Texas to earn this game. If they're going to come back and win, they're going to earn it. If you got a home run hitter on the backfield in Charles. Underneath. And it doesn't even get to the five-yard line. Nate Jones is swamped. Nice catch. Boy, that's a pretty catch by Cosby. And that's a first down for the Longhorns. That's a big time throw. In my opinion, the toughest throw for a quarterback to make. It's a timing skinny post glance route. That is just a timing route. Cole McCoy sticks it right on his face mask. Bob Crosby able to reel it in, do the chance. And Texas now going quickly, not bothering the huddle, taking the signals from the other side. I thought they would already have the play snap by now. They wasted a little bit of time. They hustled everybody up to the line and then stepped back. And McCoy has run quite a bit, picked up five there for Chris Collins, took him down, number 44. And I wonder if a little bit of that confusion isn't the Oklahoma State defense showing everybody at the line of scrimmage, looking like it's an all-out pressure, like you mentioned. Then all of a sudden at the snap, bailing out into big zone coverages, trying to confuse around Colt McCoy. McCoy has run the ball 11 times. Look out here, Charles has the speed! Touchdown, Texas! 75 yards. It's the fourth quarter. It's Charles time. We talked about that coming into the football game. What we saw last week against Nebraska and what Jamal Charles brings as a home run hitter. And right there, you see he doesn't need much. He just needs a little seam, and he can take it all the way. He is one of the fastest players in college football, if not the fastest. It's just a simple zone give, and he's got the ability to find the hole. And as soon as he breaks into the second level of the defense, he is gone. There's not another player in college football on that side of the ball that I think can catch him. That's a 98-yard drive in four plays. It took a minute and 31 seconds, 75 of them, and a big gulp by Jamal Charles with his third rushing touchdown. Can Texas continue this comeback? We've had 961 total yards in this game between these two teams, and Jamal Charles, is he about to do it again? A 75-yard run to get us to within seven if you're a Texas fan. Down 21, down 14, down 7, Texas. The second time this has happened in this game. The fourth quarter belongs to Jamal Charles. We've seen that now in the last two weeks. He almost gets better as the game goes on. And again, that pooch kick, and it's going to be fair caught. Conservative play by Tommy Devereaux. Nothing wrong with that. Doesn't take any chances. And Oklahoma State now facing the biggest drive of the game for them. Well, and they, he said it. They've had a ton of yards so far in this game. They've moved the ball very methodically, both running and passing. And yet here they are. It's, this game is turning into a shootout. And they're going to get tested here midway through the fourth quarter. 
Play calling for the Cowboys, largely working for them. The mixture of pass and run. We've got Dantrell Savage talk about people who can break big plays. No question he has that capability for Oklahoma State. And Zach Robinson has been a steady hand at quarterback. Behind Carter's block, Savage gets the edge. Short of the first down, but not by much. He took a hard hit from Bobino. More speed. Deion Beasley almost collapsed this play in the backfield from the weak cornerback position, but Savage just too much speed getting to the outside. What's interesting here as well, I don't think a shootout necessarily plays into the advantage of Oklahoma State. We talked to Tim Beckman, their defensive coordinator this week, who coached at Ohio State a couple years back and said, look, I don't want to get into shootouts. That's yeah. not my thing. I'm not used to them. I don't think his defense is built to take them either. Can the offense keep the ball away? Robinson does have that good speed, gets around the edge. He's got a first down. A more modest streak at stake here. Oklahoma State has not beaten Texas since 1997. Never have the Oklahoma State team beaten Mac Brown since he's been the Longhorns coach. And Eric Loki makes the stop there. No gain for Savage. Oklahoma State right now really trying to slow this thing down. They want the clock to run, keep the ball on the ground, whether it's Dontrell Savage or Zach Robinson on this drive, running the football, trying to wear this clock out. And of course, the little yellow marks underneath the school's names are the timeouts. So everybody's got the full complement in case Texas is going to need them. They will when they get the ball back. And Oklahoma State's going to take one of those little yellow marks off. We'll take it also. Oklahoma State trying to put this one away. A significant win it would be for them if they can hang on. Let's get to our Pacific Life game summary, Jesse. Well, we look so far in the fourth quarter, what Jamal Charles has been able to do, an 18-yard touchdown run here. And then this explosion we just saw, a 75-yard touchdown run, which capped off really a four-play, 98-yard touchdown drive for Texas to pull them back in within seven points. Second down and 10 for the Cowboys, who burned one of their three timeouts. Looking underneath, now going long for Bowman, knocked away by Beasley, who has played a terrific game. I thought underneath he was looking at the tight end Pettigrew, and he did glance there, but goes for the big shot, and it is knocked away. Third and ten. Well, Jamal Charles has had a great game so far offensively in the fourth quarter. I would argue Deion Beasley has maybe had as much of an impact defensively for Texas in this fourth quarter. We've seen him all over the place now, breaking plays up, going up against a bigger, more physical receiver, and breaking that up. That's a ball... That I think a lot of people would anticipate a Darius Bowman coming down with. Uh, Robinson has been magnificent on third downs in this game, and this is the biggest one he's had so far. It was big there, too. The incompletion stops the clock. That is big. He'll take the hole and will not get the first down, so Oklahoma State will have to punt, but they do get some positive yards, and this time they keep the clock rolling. Griffin on the stop for Texas. Well, we just saw, unfortunately for Oklahoma State, it does not take Texas a long time to go a long ways. <laughs> but on the ground, that's the funny thing. You know, most of the time you think of scoring quickly, it's in the air. Absolutely, yeah, you do. And, and they showed because their home run hitter, that guy, wearing 25 in the backfield, he can get after it. Fodge has been incredible with his accuracy, getting it inside the 20, and he has done it again. Wow. Mm. Not the one-yard line this time, mind you, but still inside the 10 to the 9. Well, time permitting, we want you to stay tuned for the Dell Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights with John Saunders and Craig James in New York. You can't ask any more of your punter than that, can you? He's been incredible. Three inside the, well, two inside the five and one inside the ten. 46 yards on that punt. I and mean, he's been unbelievable. He's been pinning this Texas team so far deep into their own end in the second half. Again, making Texas earn it. Can they do it? Here we go. You look at these numbers in 04 and 05. You see the deficit. You see what ended up happening in final score. Today, down 21-7. 21-0 at one point, 21-7, 21-14, then back to 35-14, back to 21. Now you see where we are. Will history repeat itself? Your folks in the bright orange would not like to see that. 
McCoy stepping out of one sack, and boy, his elusiveness is amazing. What a run by McCoy to get it out to the 25-yard line. There were two defensive linemen that had a solid hold and one arm on Colt McCoy, and his strength running the football broke those tackles. This has been the most impressive aspect of his game today. It probably hasn't been the passing, but it's been actually the running of Colt McCoy. And now look out here. So dangerous. Another first down for Texas. You can feel this thing turning a little bit, can't you, right now? Texas offensively just moving the football in chunks, not getting a few at a time, but gashing this Oklahoma State defense. You wonder now if depth playing a problem for Oklahoma State, guys that have been on the field all game long, not able to rotate guys in. But this is a tired Oklahoma State defense. They look at it right now. McCoy going for it right here to Shipley. I thought he was going to get in just off the momentum of the tackle. He's down to the one-yard line. The tackle made by Lacey. The biggest play of the day in the passing game for Texas comes at the most opportune time. Jordan Shipley down the sideline. One of the few times Cole McCoy has been able to just take a regular drop and let it fly and hits Jordan Shipley in stride and drags the defender down to the one-yard line. This Texas team looks very strong, and it's making a lot of people here now look very, very nervous. No more so than the man with the back of the head we saw there, Mike Gundy. I think Mac Brown's a little nervous, too. Loki goes in from the nose tackle position for Texas normally as a fullback. Second effort, and not in. They go with McGee, and he didn't make it. The clock continues to run. Again, how many plays did it just take Texas to get down to the one yard line once again? Nothing I mean, at all. Oh, it's been this, the most quick strike deal we've seen all game. It just shows you the explosive, the, the, the playmakers they have on that side of the football. And now Oklahoma State's defense with their backs to the walls, they need a huge effort here. Again, that jumbo package, and this time McCoy, and I did not admit I'm close. And maybe I don't even think lost he got it. it. No. Let, me, let me ask you to look ahead. If they get to fourth down, Clock is running, but you have all of your timeouts. What's, what do you do for Texas? Pick if, or go for it? If I'm Texas, I go for it because I would not risk letting Oklahoma State's offense back on the field and to convert third downs and continue and to, to win ball. the game. I think there's too many playmakers on the sideline right now for Oklahoma State to not go for it if I'm Texas. The momentum right now is with me if I'm Matt Brown. Yeah, they've tried up the middle twice and failed. Same formation. Obanya, three. Loki, 96, and two. McGee. McGee, easily. Touchdown, Texas. We're a point away from being tied up for the first time since nothing, nothing. Well, this Texas offense has looked good in this fourth quarter, hasn't it? It says a lot for their conditioning, I'll tell you that, because they don't get tired, obviously. They are in superior condition, not necessarily the Oklahoma State, but by superior, I mean excellent condition to be able to do this seemingly week after week they've looked good i really feel they've worn this oklahoma state defense down they look tired and they've taken advantage of it and here we are a little over three minutes left with this extra point this game is tied oh and now oklahoma state looks like they have to burn their second time out because they may have had too many Oklahoma players State. on the field. It's a 30 second timeout. Well, Vince Welch, you've been back and forth on the sidelines. What a contrast that's got to be. It's been amazing, Dave. You know, I've never gotten the feeling today that Texas ever lost its confidence, even when they were down 21 to start the fourth quarter. On the Oklahoma State side, though, it's been more of a wave of emotion. The coaches have seemed pumped throughout the course of the day, but I think the players have been tense, particularly the closer that Texas would get. You, you could feel the tension growing on the Oklahoma State sideline, and maybe it's because, as Mac Brown told me at halftime as he was getting ready to come out for the third quarter, I've never lost to Oklahoma State, and we don't think we're going to lose today either. Wow. You wonder if there's a psychological advantage there. Again, Mac Brown telling us players before this game, weather the storm in the first half because we are the better team in the second half against this Oklahoma State group. The last two drives have been 10 plays for 189 yards. Those brilliant punts 
and it didn't make a difference with this Texas offense. Look at where we are now in the score with 322 to go. That says it all right there in just one quarter. Welcome back to Nebraska, the sequel. Not even a quarter played, and Texas almost has as many yards as they had in this game in the first three quarters. And it's not like Oklahoma State hasn't made them earn it. You just touched on it. They've done everything they can offensively trying to run the ball more, burn clock with the punt game, forcing them and pinning them inside their own five yard line a couple times now, three times inside the 20. And still, Texas has responded. And I'm particularly impressed with the distances they had to go. The last two drives started at the one and the nine. That's absolutely amazing. One busted open by Charles, 75 yards, and then it goes to big 60 yarder to Shipley. The Shipley's first catch of the game, I believe, Came and it ends up being a 60 yarder. Now, here's the deal. They've been doing these little pooch kicks, forcing either Cox or Devereaux to rush up and either make a fair catch or just catch him and tumble. That's exactly the strategy again. This one, however, to be returned. And that's Cox. And he cannot escape and flags come down. We may have a face mask. And that would be wonderful field position for the Cowboys if that's the call. And that's based on the reactions from the Texas sidelines. That is going to be the call. Question is, is it five yards or is it 15 yards? During the return, personal foul, grabbing the face mask against the kicking team, number 23. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. That's the bad face mask wow. of your Texas. This is the last thing you wanted to do is give this Oklahoma State offense great field position. Here it is. You see Parrish Cox going down. Oh, looks like he had a couple players grabbing his face <laughs> mask on that. It wasn't just one guy. Here they are now, wow. Almost at midfield going in. Just a little over three minutes to try to win this football game. It's been a long time since we've had a penalty on Texas since the, uh, I think the intentional grounding was the last one. This one really hurts, potentially. Screen pass set up. Using Savage, got some blocks, and he's got a hole. Oh, well, certainly in field goal range, if nothing else, after that explosive play. Two heavyweight offenses right now just trading punches at this point in the fourth quarter. We've seen Texas with a quick stride offense, scoring quickly in chunks. And on the first play after the game is tied, Oklahoma State sets up a beautiful screen pass to its big playmaker, Dontrell Savage, from the backfield. And he's able to get it down now inside field goal range with just around three minutes left. Clock still running. You see Savage all-purpose yards nearly 200 on this game. Jason Rick's longest kick of the season, by the way, 32 yards. They're at 37 right now, but plenty of time. And only one timeout for the Cowboys. You wonder if Texas has to start thinking about taking timeouts. Savage pops through to the secondary and is brought down short of the first down. As Foster maybe saved a touchdown. If I'm Texas, I might start thinking about burning some of these because I had the ability on offense to get back in this game and score, but I don't want Oklahoma State to just whittle this clock down so that if they do score and I get it back, I don't have any time to work with. What a crazy fourth quarter this has turned into. And Mike Gundy has time to take a note or two, uh, write some things down. <laughs> Everything's just fine for him. Sure. Very composed in the <laughs> sidelines. Isn't he hasn't it? always been today, but he certainly is right now. Taking their time, getting the calls from the bench right now, putting themselves in the best opportunity to get the best play call. Yeah, it didn't work out very well that time as Lamar Houston, number 36, all over Savage, sets up biggest third down of the game. And they'll need five. And that's the field goal kicker, Jason Ricks, who's eight out of 12 on the year. His hometown, Austin, Texas. Hmm. <laughs> How about that? Savage, 183 total yards on the game. And ball security has to be of the utmost importance right now for Oklahoma State. And instead of trying to fight for all these extra yards, the most important thing is to keep possession of the football. At least give your team a chance to win. Robinson, I don't know if he expected that when he turned around. Lamar Houston was right in his mug. And so now it's going to be up, I imagine, to the field goal kicker, Jason Rickson. Here he comes. It's easy to look back on play calls, but that's one. Throwing an incompletion now stops the clock. Had they run the football right on that play, this clock might still be running, or Texas would be forced to use a timeout. And they didn't use any, Texas. They've got them all. 
Jason Ricks tried one from 54. You really can't grab him for missing that, but this one's a little bit different. This will match his long of the year. He has made his last two short kicks at 25 and 26. This is 32 and matches season high. No. Oh, man. And you could tell by the crowd noise because you only heard a little bit of cheering. There's just that knot of folks from Texas who are happy about that. So now with three timeouts. And a minute 13 left on the clock, and that's critical because Oklahoma State tried to throw a pass. It was incomplete. And you see Ricks' reaction. He can't believe it. Right-footed kicker from that hash, too. You figure he's just got to try to hook that thing in there, and he's just beside himself, and you certainly feel for him. Take another look at the kick. And it just kind of corkscrews away from him to the right. Well, that was a strange spin that started out right down the middle of the fairway. And here we go, Texas now. This is actually the best field position they've had in a while. <laughs> With a minute, 13 seconds, all their timeouts left. Underneath, they go to the big tight end, Finley, and he is just short of the first down. Texas going to go, obviously, to the no huddle, get up to the line of scrimmage. But they're not panicking right now. They, they've obviously been through the situation before. They look very calm. A lot of that's on Colt McCoy's shoulders. First down for Texas, stops the clock. Forty-nine seconds. Well, they're going to have to start going downfield. Ryan Bailey's long is 52. Nothing there. Fountain for Oklahoma State. Big defensive stop when they need it. Oklahoma State now have looked very tired, but getting an inspired effort here late in the game. Well, it's been that kind of day in college football. It seems like it always is every Saturday. And we may be staring overtime in the face here. Alabama has gone ahead of LSU today in that crazy Saban game that folks in the South have been pretty hostile about. Second down and about 12. They may get McCoy again. No, but open! Finley! First down to the 40-yard line. Got out of bounds. Clock stopped anyway. 31 seconds to go, go, and Moore makes the stop. Colt McCoy doing another excellent job moving around in the pocket, keeping the play alive, and creating on the go, hitting his big tight end, Jermichael Finley, down the boundary. 31 yards. Ryan Bailey just told our Vince Welch he can go 50, 55 yards if he has to. Right now it would be about 53 as Charles gets four. Texas stops the clock with 23 seconds to go. Chatham on the stop for the Cowboys. There is no wind conditions here at all, which is unusual. This is a pretty windy state. And of course, with this bowl effect they have here now, which they didn't have a year ago because of construction. Well, it was a difficult decision. The panel has voted on our Chevrolet players of the game. As you take a look at Bailey and his warm-up process, remember his long of the year, 52. Jamal Charles, two fourth-quarter touchdowns, 75-yard spectacular run. And Jacob Lacey, who took the first pass of the game from Colt McCoy and ran it in for a touchdown and ends up with three picks on the day. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will award a $1,000 scholarship to each school's athletic funds. General scholarship funds, pardon me. You know, so, and I know Colt McCoy's thrown three interceptions today, but I would argue he's played outstanding in the sense that he's run the ball extremely well, and in this fourth quarter, he's made some big plays to help his team back in the game. He'll roll the pocket. That's Shipley. Oh, wow. Shipley, who had the big 60-yarder, was so close to getting a first down or at least making it an easier field goal. Now, third down and six. That's a big drop. It's a big drop for Texas. Coaches will tell their quarterbacks that they would like to get the ball around the 30-yard line. That's kind of the, the, the standpoint from where teams would like to kick field goals. You want to get it to the 30 right now if you're Texas at least to give your kicker a good chance of connecting on this field goal. Jordan Shipley was very near 30-yard line when he dropped that pass. Right now, it would be a little over 53 yards for Bailey. Flags are down. It could be a longer kick. This is a false start on the Longhorns, and it's going to be against Texas. What a fatal error. Wow. False start. 
on the offense, number 55. It's a five yard penalty, still third down. And that's Cedric Dockery. I'm sure that's about the one time he never wanted to have his uniform number called. So now you're talking about a crazy long field goal of about 59 yards. We haven't seen a lot of self-destruction from the Texas offense in the second half, but on these last two plays, a drop pass and now a false start penalty, they're almost not giving themselves an opportunity to win this game before going into overtime. It's an interesting decision to make if you're calling plays for Texas. McCoy could run this, and he will, and he'll get a first down, and look at that. Colt McCoy so alert, so smart, and now this is a much more manageable attempt for Ryan Bailey, plus they can run another play, and they have a timeout. Colt McCoy is fired up right now, and he should be. He has done this all game long, and at the biggest point and moment of this football game, he's able to scramble out, not just get positive yards, get a first down, and get the ball out to the 27-yard line. His kicker is loving him right now. He's giving him a great chance. Ryan Bailey, he's from Austin, Texas. 14 out of 18, Bailey on the year. This is well within his range. They go to Charles. Of course, he can run this in himself for a touchdown. He doesn't. It'll be about a 40-yard field goal. You might as well run this clock down to one and get ready for Ryan Bailey. And that's exactly what Mac Brown does. He takes it down to two seconds. You know, Ryan Bailey was awarded a scholarship this year. He's a former walk-on. The first kick Ryan Bailey ever tried, it was in the snow in Lincoln, Nebraska. The regular kicker was hurt. Bailey had about a 25-yard field goal, swirling winds, miserable conditions, and he nailed it, and Texas beat Nebraska and Lincoln a year ago. And off of that, Bailey earned a scholarship. Very popular player on his team. The team was thrilled when Mac Brown made the announcement. They'll even be more thrilled if he can somehow manage the winning kick. With two seconds left on the clock. You know what, though? There's not real pressure. I'll tell you why. It's not to win the game. I mean, it's to win the game, but if he doesn't make it, okay. They, they get another play. chance, true. But, you know, especially, I think, after watching your offense and defense fight to get yeah. to this team back in the game, and you've now watched Colt McCoy really put this team on his shoulders on this last drive to give you an opportunity. Believe me, he wants to make this thing right now. 40 yards for an amazing come-from-behind win. Moneyball, Texas wins it. It came down to two kickers from Austin, Texas. One who had a chance to put his team in front, couldn't get it done. The other one had a chance to get his team to win it, and he did. Mac Brown, Mike Gundy, well, Mac Brown will walk off the field knowing they still haven't beat him in Oklahoma State, in Stillwater, or in Austin. It's the type, it's the way the season has gone for Texas this year, hasn't it? Hey, Vince, go ahead. Just had a long conversation with Mike Gundy. What did you tell him, Mike? Well, I told Mike they did a great job. It's been unfortunate that Oklahoma State has coached against us so well and played against us so hard, and it hadn't worked out for them. And this was a great football game that was kind of three quarters their way, and our teams won a whole lot of football games. And as I told you at halftime, they believe. And uh, give Oklahoma State credit for doing a great job today. Give our staff and our kids credit for hanging in there and winning at the end. What's been the key in the turnaround for your team this season? Oh, I think just growing up, we were really inexperienced in a lot of positions, and we had a lot of things we needed to work on, and, and the guys just keep believing. This staff's been around a long time, so uh, we got a lot left that we can do, and got a whole lot of things we can fix, obviously, and a lot of things that need to get better for next week. Congratulations. Thank you. Dave. All right, Vince. I know they call it Bedlam, and Oklahoma State plays Oklahoma, but this was Bedlam. 311 fourth quarter yards for Texas, and it ends with a field goal. 38-35, Texas over Oklahoma State. For Jesse Palmer and Vince Welch, I'm Dave Lamont. So long from Stillwater.